Welcome to Holistic Healing Astrology channel. And today in this video, we're going to highlight Prince William. We're going to look at his personality, his natal chart, and then the transits that will affect him currently and in the future. And then we will compare him to Princess Kate and his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. And the finale will be how they all get along. And as an astrologer, I'm here to break it down for you. And we're going to go step by step to look at all the pertinent information that has to do with the way they get along and what could be impacting their lives right now. So we always start with the natal chart. And then we move towards the current situations in the sky. And we do have a lot going on right now in March 2024, going into April. This year, 2024, is a very dynamic and explosive year that is going lightning fast. So when you have a question please be sure to comment below and that way we could address your questions one by one. We want to make astrology and all the other metaphysical um, studies that we do here uh, easy to understand and accessible to everyone. And if you don't know who I am, I am Ev Zervudakis holistic healing astrology founder and we are located right here in beautiful virginia beach virginia on this channel we talk about astrology psychic abilities psychic development and mediumship and the invisible world all the metaphysical modalities that I am very interested in and willing to share with you. So we are going to look at a screen share of the charts in one moment. So here we have Prince William's natal chart. And as an astrologer, you always check the date that the person's born so Prince William was born June 21st, 1982, 9.03 p.m., London, England. And so this program that I use, Ephemeris, plots the exact precise position of the planet, where he was born, and then we look up at the sky from Earth, and this is what we see. This is the cosmic fingerprint that I always talk about, and it shows here all his characteristics. So if you were to have a natal chart reading with me, I would look at the big influences here. So it looks like there's two main areas of focus for Prince William, and that would be with home, his roots, you know, creativity and love, romance and entertaining, being uh, a performer of such, and then everyday life and a little bit on um, partnerships. And then the other main focus would be on overseas, higher uh, spiritual matters uh, like rights and uh, all Sagittarius things, because this is the house of Sagittarius, rules, ethics, values, beliefs, philosophy, and, you know, it's worldwide. And then over here, this is the area of career. And the other one, the other cluster of influence is in the behind the scenes area here or when he's sleeping or alone and isolated. Um, so as you know, there's always free will. So if William was sitting across from, from me, uh, I would say, well, 
the obvious, you know, your ascendant is in the sign of Capricorn, which makes him very accomplishment oriented and achievement oriented, very uh, sure and steady, methodical, not so fast paced and uh, also very determined, conservative. This is, you know, the list of characteristics that Capricorn has. But this is the first impression and what other people see in him. So he may, and he may not see himself that way. But he also has a little bit of Aquarius inside his first house. So if you remember back in the Princess Kate video, in her seventh house, which has to do with partners, spouses, and everything else, uh, contracts, it's Aquarius. So, of course, he's going to be a good fit for the princess. So, there are always little check marks of repeating themes in different people's charts. So, when you get a repeat theme over and over and over again, then the likelihood of this coming to fruition is very strong. So I go slowly so everyone can follow. And I try to break it down. So if you don't know anything about astrology, you can still follow me. So those, those of you that know a lot about astrology, I thank you in advance for your patience. So the other thing that's important too is where the south node is okay so the north node and the south node are important in any astrological chart because this is where you came from what's familiar so for him being a capricorn you know being achievement oriented big business uh big big company that kind of thing uh, society and social status. That's the impression that people get of him. But his son is opposite that sign. So whenever we have an opposite in astrology, there's a need to balance, but it's sort of on the same wavelength. So what do I mean by that? Well, his son and the moon together, the sun is the outward personality, I will it's the masculine energy of the zodiac planets and or luminaries. And the moon is the receptive. So he was born on a new moon, if you see here, in Cancer. And remember, the moon represents mother. His mother was a Cancer. And, um, and we'll see later on how this configuration compares to Princess Kate. This is what's fascinating about astrology. So on TikTok, I get a lot of people that poo-poo the astrology and they just don't understand, but it's okay for those of you that are trying to understand that there is a relationship and it's all mathematical. This is scientific. So it is an art and a science. What is artsy about it is what key words I choose as an astrologer to go for the sun and the moon and each sign. So the wheel represents all the areas of life and they're divided by your personality, yourself. Over here is your finances, all personal, your uh, learning style, how you think and your home life, your family life, and then your romantic life, entertainment, and then we have your daily duties and habits, your health, and it goes on now. If this is yourself, this is us, you, you, and me. That's us, and that's on this, in the seventh house, partnerships, and then this is our money, joined resources or join finances. And then up here, this is higher education, the big picture, philosophy, wisdom, 
all that Sagittarius type energy. Now, remember, all the signs correspond to a planet and each sign and planet corresponds to the house. So if you know that the first house represents Aries and Mars, then you know that all those energies are over here in William's ascendant. So what he projects out there is I am Capricorn and my worth is scientific, worldwide, humanitarian, and spiritual, you know, the finances. And that's how we do it. So if you know this part of the chart, then you're going to know the opposite because this is personal for me. And then this is for us. So this is us together, our money, our knowledge, and then our career, which is always opposite our family. And then we have our friends in community and our friends in the home. And then this is when we're all by ourselves and nobody sees us and when we are behind the scenes. Okay. Probably no one knows this. When you're sleeping, your dream state, uh, your relationship with God or the higher source. Okay. So here we also have to look at his personal planets of Mercury in Gemini. They belong together. So his thinking is very quick. He's very curious and inquisitive, intelligent, and maybe a little scattered because it's a very cerebral energy. And when it comes to romance, entertainment, having fun, it might be on an intellectual level. Only he would tell us. So that's a personal planet. And that, so if you want to know more about that, we dive into all the aspects, all these angular relationships to all the other planets that Mercury connects to. So he is very intelligent. We know that. But then in the area of his home life, which is his roots, which is about materialism and things and comfort, okay, and security. And his mother always tried, you know, Princess Diana always tried to provide that. But you see, you know, this area represents mom as well. So mom is represented here with the moon, but mom is also here. And feminine energy, money, love, Taurus, so very sensual type person. And, but right next to it, or partile, which is a definition, it's on the same degree is the wounds and the trauma of probably his mom, you know, the loss of the mom. So we would have to take a look at that and see, oh, yes, we have some interesting uh, angles here that go to Mars, which is aggression, and that go to Saturn which is re restriction of relationship. So that's the kind of thing that happened to him. So there was always adjustment. And it must have been a very difficult type of a childhood because they had no privacy. You know, everyone knew his business and continues to know the business. But that's part of the royalty, the royal family. And the other thing that we cannot neglect is he was born during an eclipse himself because this would be a solar eclipse. Partial, of course, because the North Node was distant to the sun and the moon. But solar eclipse for sure. And it's opposite his greatest joy, success, and prosperity in business and who he is and letting go of being too career oriented. And what his purpose is, is to be more caring and go towards that unfamiliarity of being more caring, nurturing, family oriented. Because over here, it shows that he is 
business oriented, career oriented. Remember, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And so maybe with higher education, he may have had some struggles because he had Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter. Jupiter magnifies everything. Pluto is major transformation. So I'm sure that he did go to different schools, you know, because it was, uh, you know, maybe the military school here, Mars is aggression, a lot of responsibilities that he had with relationships and then the transformation of relationships. Uh, but Ju Jupiter is also joy and expansion and manifestation. And on a psychological tone, all these things that have happened would expand him on a psychological note and on a deep rooted uh, note. Also, he could be a great, uh, like with higher learning or his philosophy could be very much influenced with digging deep and being a detective and uh, maybe very, very, very private, you know, because Scorpio is all about secrecy, but he takes all that on in a big way in a big way because he loves it and maybe if he was talking to us like personally uh, he might share with us that he loved the occult and he loves playing around with the tarot cards or he loved going deep down into subjects or psychology how people tick um, all that mysterious stuff or even death you know or shared resources, you know, other people's money. So that's a glimpse of, of Prince William, but we can't neglect that the highest point in his chart is the 17 degrees, and that's called the midheaven. But the most elevated planet is that Uranus planet, which is a lightning bolt. So people like that are very, very quick to think and sometimes act. So this would make him a little on the gambling side, a little on the reckless side. Most fire signs are a little more um, action oriented and more spontaneous. So Sagittarius has to do with higher learning and that kind of, uh, you know, ethics, values, and and I use my cheat sheets so I could see, well, if that didn't make sense to Prince William, then I would say, what is it in your career that's maybe scientific or you're interested in in science or that has to do with values or higher education or internationally uh, known or different cultures uh, or even publishing, you know? And this is electronic so he might have a special little project that's scientific uh, and also maybe unique where he would be serving on a righteous or even lawful uh, effort. So, and it's at one degree, so it's something that he would be excited about, but it would be in his career. So we don't know. He's still a young man. Uh, what he's going to do. But if you look here just at a glance, because, you know, I could spend hours just looking at his chart, but we still have all the other charts to look at and compare. But I want you to understand some of the basics in his chart. And if we wanted to know more about his career, then we would look at Pluto, because that's the ruler of Scorpio, which is here in the ninth house. So this is a very scientific step-by-step -step way to and for analysis. So Pluto is all about relationships, contracts, but it's in the area of the whole wide world. You see the big picture, higher learning, publishing. So in his career, it's, it's very secretive. Yes. If you are part of the Royal family, you can't be a blabbermouth when you go to the bar and have a couple of drinks and tell people what you, what's going on. 
that's just not the way it works in the palace. <laughs> so, and everybody knows that. So now bear with me, we are going to, I'm going to pause and go into the next uh, chart so we could compare. Actually, we don't have to pause. Let's see what the current positions are showing for Prince Williams. Well, the first thing I see at the top is this here. And sometimes I miss details. Do you know there are over 4,000 bits of information here on a natal chart? Now I'm looking at 4,000 more. So now we're looking at 8,000 bits of information. So here we have the transiting, because this is what's current out in the sky. So we have some powerful energies here influencing his north and south node and influencing Pluto distantly, Saturn spot on because it's 15 degrees, 15 degrees, 15 degrees, and Mars, which is action, aggression, assertiveness, okay? This is restriction, bad stuff, negative thinking, um, and discipline. So the purpose here is himself, and it's in the area of communication. And again, the planet of communication. So there's a lot of communication going on about his purpose. And see here, this is Chiron, the planet of healing, trauma, pain and suffering. So yes, he's under a humongous attacks. And I feel badly because it's all speculative. We don't know anything that's really going on. The only thing we do know is what we can't see. And it's frustrating the heck out of everybody. So everybody has a theory. What happened to Princess Kate? And, you know, and he's having an affair and she's having an affair and this one's pregnant, that one. I mean, come on, you know, human beings have a wild imagination. But let's just look at the facts of the chart because we don't know anything and we may never know, okay? We may never know. However, I think it's interesting to see that what's out there worldwide is affecting this major energy pattern in his chart, which has to do with legalities and other people. And this is major transformation, big time. And it's psychological. So I'm concerned about him. You know, this could wear on your mental health. Because remember here, he's very cerebral over here. You know, he can't even have fun. Because, you know, he's, everything's always impacting on him. So that's enough about that. But this whole thing here, this whole energy pattern here is affecting his spouse, his relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships, partners, and who he is. Because see these 13 degrees, 12 degrees, which impacts on his purpose and what he needs to let go of. This is what's familiar. This is what isn't familiar, where he's striving in this lifetime to go towards. So this is a big impact on Prince William. Do you see that? And there's a lot of energy here, slow and fast energy. The outer planets move very slowly, but the uh, inner planets, the personal planets move quickly. But right now you could see, you don't have to know astrology, you could see there's a big am impact on his self-worth, his possessions, his finances, is it bad or good? We don't know, but there's a big impact. So people, a lot of astrologers will say, this is going to happen. And this, 
The only way that I could say this is going to happen is after it happens, I could say, well, this points out to what maybe nudged it to happen. Okay. Because you have free will. So the planetary energies line up for him. And then it's up to him how he's going to take action. If you have any questions, put them down below. And I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. So now let's look at Prince William and Kate Middleton because I my video went viral uh, on TikTok because I talked just a little bit very quickly because I was in between appointments. Oh my God, did people go crazy? I wasn't using the proper titles. And I don't know what I'm talking about. And you're crazy and you didn't say anything. Well, look how long we've been talking right now uh, about this one thing here, you know, just Prince uh, Philip, you know, uh, Philip William. And it's already 31 minutes and we still didn't get to Princess Kate. And I want to quickly go through with uh, Queen Elizabeth to see how they all work together. And they all had eclipses, but that I'm going to go over deeply when the eclipses on everything eclipse, when we do the class on the 24th of March, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time on Zoom. If you need any information, just go into our website or give us a call. We'll take care of you. Okay. So now I am going to um, I'm going to pause the recording for a second so I don't bore you. Here. So let's take a few minutes to look at the comparison. This is what you call a compatibility chart. So if they came to see me as a couple, I would share with them what flows and what could be a bit of a struggle. So we're not going to do the whole thing, but I do want to show some similarities and some things that I think mean a tremendous amount um, as far as how long they're going to last at a cup as a couple. Okay. So let's show uh, the sun and the moon relationship. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, so on the inside wheel here is Prince William's chart. And on the outside wheel is Kate Middleton's chart. And you could see here that Kate Middleton's son is opposite, opposite Prince William's North Node, which is very significant. That's his purpose. And also, we have to look at Prince William's sun and moon, because he was a new moon, and I believe she was a full moon. We got to look at her moon. Yeah, she's a full moon. So she was born with an eclipse, and so was he. You see? Now, his son is on, I'm looking to see, his son and her moon are relatively close together. And his moon and her son are opposed. But whenever you have contact with the sun and the moon like this, like her moon is almost on his son. That's a stretch. So people that have that tend to be till death do us part. Okay. So that's that. Now, the other thing that I see that's pretty critical is I'm going to look at the slower planets. So let's start with um, the Chiron. So Chiron is the healing the the trauma, the pain and suffering, they both had it in their home life, okay? And it's, it has to do with possessions. 
and things and security and safety, both of them. So they share that together. All right. The other thing too is they both share the same North node energy and South node energy. They have very similar purposes. Isn't that interesting? So they both have eclipses and they one is a lunar, one is a solar, and they both have the same kind of purpose for life. They both have very similar action type energy, very much action oriented towards others, partnerships and legalities. So, cause it's Libra and it's like, they do whatever they can to keep peace, harmony. All right. This energy here. And I think that's very interesting. And Kate's Mars action, aggression, assertiveness, self-centeredness is also um, on William's Saturn, which she could help him take action where he might be a little hesitant. You know, the doubts, negative thinking, all that in relationships, you see? So this is how they would work well together. And I think it's interesting too that Kate's got the similar setup here with restrictions, uh, responsibilities, duties, all in the big picture here worldwide. You can't be a ki future king and queen without major responsibilities for others, you see? And it's in a big way. See how similar they are? This is Jupiter. Jupiter, their biggest joy um, is in, you know, the psychological components, the deep rooted components, but they both love their privacy, you know? And here's another similarity because of course they're from the same generation, but th they have great minds. And I'm wondering if they have channeling abilities where they have prophetic um, insights with what to do in their career or society. See, this is this is all lightning bolt, sudden, shocking, everything in their career has that same energy, highly intellectual, they know, very original, both of them, you see? And they both share the Neptune and Black Lilith together in the same area of life, you know, behind the scenes. So I would say they're both very, very psychic. I would also say because of Black Moon Lilith that all the ancestors, the spiritual world is helping them, guiding them 100%. Can I prove it? No, only if I ask them, you know, do you see uh premonit, you know, do you get premonition dreams? Are you seeing aberrations? Um, are you getting major signs from Queen Elizabeth II? All that. Okay. So, so that's the the big picture of Kate Middleton, or we should call her Princess Kate. Otherwise, you know, it'll be all over the comments and it's kind of boring to listen to that. But, and I'm sure there's a lot that I missed here, but the other thing we have to understand is it's their free will. And let's look at now the both of them together with what's going on now, which I haven't really done prior because I've been going crazy. Um, so... So this, so there, this has to do with secrets. This has to do with um, bad news as far as corruption, um, scandals. You know, it's Scorpio energy. It's that dark side. Of, well, or it could be psychological. It could be death. There's a million and one things. Um, is he dead? I don't think so. But it is big. And it's right next to his career and his home life. You know, and it has to do with pain and suffering and healing. So 
it's a cosmic thing. He's got to heal. And it's kind of shocking and um, and unexpected. Maybe they never thought that if Kate Middleton had to go to the hospital, that the whole world would go berserk and say, where is she? Oh, and they go with the imagination. You know, Neptune is imagination. <laughs> so we still have Neptune and Pisces. And you could see that right here. It's going to the latter stages and it's next to the sun. This is this is how the planets are right now. And it's affecting all of us. So we are all in La La Land, you know, coming up with all these very imaginative scenarios. So I'm going to skip all that for you. But um, there's definite restriction here for everybody with money and um, that sense of love, money in the area of spirituality and mysticism, you know, and that's all in um, in this area here. So, so that's what's going on. But the big deal is professional setting, home life setting, okay? That's the big thing that I see at a glance. And uh, Black Moon Lilith. And, and then again, we would look at the nodes, uh, as we spoke of before, that have to do with restrictions and the negative energies out there, especially with re relation to Prince William. Um, everybody's siding with Princess Kate, but, you know, poor Prince William, he's, they're throwing him under the bus. You know, if you look at all the comments, I mean, I'm just going by my statistics, but uh, for 200 plus thousand views, um, a lot of people, did like the video that I put out there, which was just a little like, hey, I'm doing a video on YouTube about uh, Princess or Kate Middleton. And it, everybody went crazy because everybody loves her. So let's stop this and we're going to go into and look and see how the Queen Elizabeth fares with all this. So for the finale of this video, let's look at the outer wheel here, which is Queen Elizabeth born April 21st, 1926. Same year my father was born. God rest their souls. So what's going on here? Well, there is some action here with Queen Elizabeth's imagination and spirituality and Leo is the king, Leo is royal, and Princess Kate's ascendant, which is Leo, and then we have Prince, Prince Williams. Uh, I'm going to look at some, how that relates to him with the imagination for him that flows into this energy. So let's see how they would all get along. We're going to look at the sun and the moon. So Queen Elizabeth was a zero degree, which means she had a lot of enthusiasm for uh, safety uh, and determination and comfort. And she was a person of her word, of course, but zero degrees means that she was all in. It's a new beginning. And you know, when you get a brand new pair of shoes or something brand new, new home, you're very happy about it and enthusiastic. Where when you have 29 degrees, it's like, can we get this over with? So um, Prince William has 29 degrees with Black Moon Lilith, which is like this urgency of this these negative emotions especially with the the world and what's right and what's wrong values and ethics you see so she's an earth sign and princess kate is also an earth sign because she's a capricorn and then we're going to look at prince philip and see that his ascendant is earth 
his greatest joy, success, and prosperity is earth. And his node, his so south node is earth. Okay? And then water is the sun sign. And Kate Middleton's moon is water sign. And the queen, Queen Elizabeth's north node was in a water sign. You see, so they were all very sensitive, very sensitive. So the slow part is Kate Middleton and Queen Elizabeth are more slow to react where Prince William would be much quicker because he has the most elevated planet Uranus uh, at, at the top of the chart. Okay, right here. All right. So that shows you the big, the big impact that they had eclipses and there were major similarities with the elements in their chart and how they got along. And if you have any questions, um, then you could put them on the bottom. And as soon as we get to it, uh, we could go over them. But again, there's another similarity. You have Queen Elizabeth's action Mars in humanitarian efforts here, right? A lot of activity on Kate Middleton's descendant, which is her area of others, same exact degree. So she was just as hardworking Kate Middleton as the queen was, okay? And then it does reflect here, um, not so much with Prince William. He has other things going on, okay? So if you did like this video, um, go ahead and share it to other people because that's the only way that they're going to find out about what we do here on this channel. And if you need any of our services, that would be easy for you to just go onto our website or even give us a call. We promise to call you back and see what you need. If you're not sure, you could do a discovery call. So, uh, if you want to keep up with our schedule and I don't really have a set schedule, to be honest, I try to post at least once a month, but lately with all this activity, I'm posting once a week and I'm still backed up, but go ahead, hit the thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. And uh, sometimes if you give me a nudge as to what you want to hear about, I'll make it a point to make it pro a priority. And this is all for you. We do this for you, for you to learn, to better understand astrology, because it is making its way back into the human evolution. I bid you a goodbye and let us know too where you're from. I'm getting people from all around the planet that are saying the most kind things. So God bless you, love and light. And till next time, you be safe out there.